This is Vanessa with Azing News. United States promises to work with Philippines on Donates Precision Guided Missiles. White House National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien visits the Philippines for a meeting and discussion with leaders of a regional security collaboration and the importance of Southeast Asia to the United States. According to the military document, Washington pledged to provide the Philippines with $18.4 million worth of precision-guided missiles this year to use in its fight against Islamist militants in the South. The missiles are being funded under the United States Congress Act that allows the Defense Department to train and equip foreign armies allied with Washington to fight Islamist militants across the world since 2006. According to the Philippines Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr., the precision-guided missiles and munitions donated to the Philippines was a fulfillment of a promise made by President Donald Trump during a phone call earlier this year. World leader reached consensus at three multilateral meetings. China's Foreign Minister briefs the media on the outcomes of the BRICS, APEC and G20 leaders' meetings. From BRICS to APEC and G20 summits, leaders from all over the world emphasizes the need for continuous coordinated response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Three meetings sent out one clear message. Multilateralism, solidarity and coordination is our best as well as our only option to tackle the global challenges. Chinese expresses its support of the World Health Organization's leader while expressing support for equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines worldwide. China believes the importance of developing the digital economy, smart cities and new technologies such as artificial intelligence. Going forward, leaders affirmed the need to improve global economic governance, advance regional economic integration and strengthen solidarity and cooperation among emerging markets and developing countries. World leaders reaches a consensus to jointly fight the COVID-19 pandemic and recover the global economy during the three high-level meetings. And by offering its wisdom and vision at the meetings, China once again demonstrated itself as a responsible nation in the international community. China and Germany work together to develop COVID-19 vaccine. Chinese President Xi Jinping, in a phone conversation with the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, says that China stands ready to strengthen exchanges and cooperation with Germany on COVID-19 vaccines and push for the vaccines to be fairly distributed as a global public good, especially for the benefit of developing countries. She notes that both sides advocate upholding multilateralism, boosting international cooperation, joining forces against the coronavirus disease, reinvigorating the world economy, and jointly tackling global challenges. He notes that China and Germany have kept communication in a flexible way, with practical cooperation continuing to advance. Merkel notes that the world is undergoing profound changes and that Europe is facing the impact of a second wave of the pandemic. The fact that China has done a good job in COVID-19 prevention and control and taking the lead in economic recovery is good news for German enterprises. She expressing the hope that the two sides will increase communication on vaccine cooperation and push forward cooperation in such fields as trade investment and new energy vehicles. The German sides congratulates China on having signed the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership trade deal with relevant parties and hopes to step up efforts with China to push for concluding negotiations on the European Union and China. Germany stands ready to continue to maintain close communication with China over major Germany and China and European Union and China political agendas for the next phase. She will stay committed to pushing for sustained and sound development of Germany and China and European Union and China relations. The digital technologies transforms the business upgrading in China. Experts say at the World Internet Conference's Internet Development Forum held in East China, a new round of scientific and technological revolution and industrial transformation driving the rapid development of digital technologies in China, injecting a new impetus in the country's economy. At the conference held in East China province, Zhejiang, innovation-driven growth has become a hot topic for participants from diverse domains. Ding Lei Yun, academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, says the world's most recent internet development trends and cutting-edge technologies provide a strong technical support to the construction industry. Uh, we should build a house like manufacturing a car using digital design and intelligent design and ensure that the whole production process at the construction site can be calculated, analyzed and optimized to improve the construction quality and ensure the safety of workers. 
Besides construction industry, China's rental housing services are also embracing a stronger development momentum and broader development space helps by the technological improvements in the post-pandemic era. There is a blowout for online house viewing, including VR home viewings and online signing. In fact, that the pandemic has catalyzed the digital transformation of the whole real estate sector, real estate transactions and service, which I think is quite obvious. Meanwhile, the Internet also plays an important role in speeding up China's economic recovery, ensuring society's smooth operation and promoting international cooperation against COVID-19. With the aid of the digital technology, China is one of the fastest countries to resume production and start economic recovery. Under this circumstance, a large number of scenarios have also forced the evolution of cloud technology research, cloud application modem, and even promoted the integration of cloud and Ding Talk, as well as the integration of cloud and ends. Brazilian court orders preventive detention for suspect of murder, Japanese woman. According to local media, a Brazilian court orders to preventive detention of Rafael Lima da Costa, a suspect of murdering a Japanese woman. Da Costa was arrested after police tracked him using security camera footage and found where he had burned clothes. Hitomi Akamatsu was found by a waterfall on a property owned by a disgraced spiritual guru, João Teixeira de Faria, known as João de Deus or John of God, the self-proclaimed healer, who became a celebrity after appearing on a show hosted by Oprah Winfrey, has been found guilty of raping women who came to his retreat. Police says Da Costa confessed to killing Akamatsu on November 10 to steal from her. Police says Akamatsu arrived at a ranch roughly two years ago to seek treatment after claiming to have survived radioactive exposure from Japan's Fukushima blast. She had stayed on after John of God's arrest and was well known by residents in the town of Abadiania, some 120 kilometers southwest of Brazil's capital, Brasilia. Brazil Turkish Airlines statement receives Sinovac vaccines from China to fight against coronavirus disease. Turkish Airlines says in a statement it successfully carried the first batch of China's Sinovac vaccine against COVID-19 to Brazil's Sao Paulo state. A Turkish Airlines official says the vaccines are first transferred to Istanbul from Chinese capital of Beijing and keep in a temperature control smart warehouse designs for the cold chain shipments. The official adds seven active temperature control containers carrying vaccines by ship to Sao Paulo, which is at flight distance of approximately 7,000 kilometers from China. The weight of cargo was three tons with the containers. Brazil says it's set to begin importing the first of 46 million doses of Chinese Sinovac vaccines against COVID-19. The director of Sao Paulo State's Butantan Institute Biomedical Center, Dimas Kovas, in Congressional says that Butantan expects to have 46 million doses of Sinovac ready in January to use as it approved by Brazil's health regulator Anvisa. Butantan is organizing the phase 3 trials on vaccine in Brazil, with Kovas saying preliminary results indicate it has an excellent safety profile. Brazil is the third highest coronavirus case count in the world, leading many pharmaceutical companies to do trials of their vaccines in South America's largest country. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership members join on potential development momentum. Chinese experts say the signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the world's largest free trade deal, has a great significance to the development of the Asia-Pacific region as the members have huge growth potential and development momentum. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement are signed among its 15 participant countries, launching the world's biggest free trade bloc. Uh, <coughs> The main feature of the RCEP is that it's a huge free trade zone. Its economic aggregate has surpassed that of the North American free trade zone, which consists of the United States, Canada and Mexico in 2018. Meanwhile, it has also exceeded the economic aggregate of the European Union. The RCEP is a free trade zone with a huge scale and grant market. Once it's up and running, it will be the world's largest free trade zone. And since the members include both developed countries and many developing countries, its growth potential and development momentum can be huge. Participating countries include the 10 member countries of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations and China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. The 15 participating countries of the RCEP account for around 30% of the global population, global gross domestic product and global trade. 
Papua New Guinea Prime Minister faces leadership tests after allies withdraw support. Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marape is facing a threat to his leadership after several high-profile government members switches to the parliament opposition, citing growing economic worries facing the indebted Pacific nation. And Papua New Guinea is now seeing the ugly head of politics again. Uh, I am surrounded by leaders who are confident that we will stand all the way through uh, December 2 and we will stand all the way through 2021. Marape have power for just 18 months after replacing long service leader Peter O'Neill in a similar process. Involves prominent government ministers switching sides. Deputy Prime Minister Sam Basil and Foreign Affairs Minister Patrick Pruaich are among those who withdraw support for the government as opponents use their numbers to suspend the parliament and start throwing up plans for a vote of confidence that could oust Marape. I have with me 52 and more coming in as we speak. Uh, there are contacts being made. Uh, uh, politics is numbers game. Uh, if you have number, by all means, this is not my bad right. But we will deploy every means possible, legal means and political means, to ensure that the government that people elected uh, is, through members of parliament, is uh, sustained in December. Marapi uses his leadership to put some of the world's biggest resources companies on notice over a perceived lack of wealth flowing from their projects back to communities. The opposition's challenge the time to block the passage of the government's budget while also triggering the mechanism for changing a leader. We want to do the right thing for the country. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why we changed government in 2019 was to move away from a status quo that was rife with corruption, status quo that was subscribing to corporate interests, uh, multinational interests, greed for a greedy few, and we made the change. The government leader pledges to turn the research-rich South Pacific archipelago into the richest black Christian nation on earth and has battled to secure a bigger take for the country from major resource projects, leading to delays in the development of gas fields by ExxonMobil Corp and Total. Papua New Guinea are weighed down by dire levels of debt built up for many years, made worse by the novel coronavirus pandemic. Paris, Hong Kong and Zurich becomes world most expensive cities amid COVID-19. The Economist Intelligence Unit, a global business intelligence under the UK Economist Group, released its latest report on worldwide cost of living survey after rating 133 global cities and comparing the price of a basket of 138 everyday items in each. According to the research, Paris, Hong Kong and Zurich joined ranks as the world's most expensive cities since the COVID-19 outbreak. Cities in Americas, Africa and Eastern Europe seek their cost fall due to the depreciation of US dollars, but Western Europe cities become more expensive as a result of the euro rise in value against US dollars. Singapore and Osaka, which tied with Hong Kong in previous survey reports in March, slippers to fourth and fifth places in cost of living since the pandemic. Furthermore, the pandemic has also influenced people's consumption habits. Drone footage South Korean artists transforming trash into art on mountains. An artist finds the slopes of Mount Jiri, South Korea's largest national park, littered with rubbish. During a two-day trip in 2018, she decided it was time to send out a message about taking better care of nature. We make an image of nature, an animal, which is suffering from trash and the effects of humans. This junk art shows a crying cat who was attacked by rubbish. She finds clean hikers, a group dedicated to picking up trash from mountain parks and turning the collection into art. Other works include collages made of discarded face masks bottles and even running shoes that depict a fish, bird, butterfly and a boy. After the works are created and documented, the garbage is thrown away in a proper rubbish bin or are taken to be recycled. With carbs linked to COVID-19 restricting indoor activities and large gatherings, more South Koreans are now spending time out in the open air. According to the Korean National Park Service, the number of visitors to three major national parks close to the country's big cities has risen more than 20% compared to the same period. Visits to the 22 national parks it's managed generated more than hundreds of tons of rubbish in the first nine months. We cannot clean up whole mountains. The more important thing is to keep doing this activity, tell people about this, and get more people to join in. This is much more crucial. And that's all the news for today. Have a lovely weekend and see you.